Hi everyone, welcome back to Mathematically Inclined and in case you are new, hi, I am Neha. In today's video, we are going to discuss what is range of a function and how do we exactly calculate it. In case you people do not know how to find the domain of a function, well, then check out my previous video. Link for the same you can get by clicking at the i button and also at the end of this video. So, let's get started. So now, range. By range, we mean the output. So as we were discussing in the previous video on domain of a function, where what all values can my x take? Here, by range, we mean after x has been put in the function, what all values come out? So that means what is the output? Plus, my four steps over here are going to make this super super simple for you guys. First step, whatever is the function, just define it as y or label it as y. So for instance, I have a function say x minus 1, I label it as y. Next step, very important, express x as a function of y. By this I mean, what you do is, now you put x on y, now you put x on one side and this becomes your new function, right? So now x has been created in terms of y. Third, find possible values for y just like your domain. So now what you have done is you have created a new question for yourself. You have to find the domain for this just like you were doing earlier. That that means your function never gets invalid, it always stays defined. So here, as you can see, it's very clear my y can take any real value. Last step, last step is very critical. Eliminate values by looking at the definition to write the final range. Now, as we have discussed, values for y or the output is your range. But it also depends on what the input is. So now is the time to look at the function again. My function was x minus 1 and I realized it was allowed for all real values. So in short here also y is okay. It is allowed for all real values. I don't have to take out any specific values from here. Right now this step might be sounding very confusing but trust me as we move along with the questions it would start making sense. So right now take down these four steps and then we get started with the questions. So coming to the very first question it says fx is equal to x minus 2 upon 3 minus x. Well we all know if you have actually seen my video on domain of a function domain over here is very clearly real numbers minus 3 because there the function gets not defined. Now for finding the range, step number 1, equate it with y. Okay. Step number 2, express x as a function of y. What you can do over here is just cross multiply. So we get x minus 2 is equal to 3y minus xy. Now keep your aim very clear that all the expressions involving y would be pulled to one side and the remaining x would lie on the other. So that means let my x stay here and I'll also bring this minus xy to the left. So x plus xy is equal to 3y plus 2. Taking x common we get 1 plus y is equal to 3y plus 2. I am sure it's clear till now. After this, x is equal to 3y plus 2 upon y plus 1. That's it. You have expressed x in terms of y. After this, move to step 3. It says find the possible values for y just like finding the domain. So that means now I just need to focus on my new function. It says now where all will my function be defined? Of course for all real values except when the denominator becomes 0 that means when y is minus 1. So from here this implies y must belong to r except for 
the value minus 1. So most likely this is going to be my range. Last step says eliminate values by looking at the definition or the initial function. If I look at my initial function, it's just a basic function which is not defined at 3. So that's it. I don't have to look into this. Trust me, the last step is important for the square root functions. We will discover that with more and more questions. Right now, the range for the given function is simply r minus minus 1. Wasn't this easy and quick? Have a look. Now let's look at the second question. What we again do is equate it with y. And now, just to make more sense, how do I express x in terms of y? Let's square both sides. So if I square both sides over here, we end up getting 1 upon x minus 5 is equal to y square. Let's cross multiply, we get 1 is equal to xy square minus 5y square, which would be xy square is equal to 1 plus 5y square. I'm just doing your basic calculations. This means my x is going to be 1 plus 5y square upon y square. Okay, so we have expressed x in terms of y. Now what you are going to do is again try to find the possible values for y just like your domain. As you can clearly see my y can take any value except, except when y is equal to 0. So y cannot be equal to 0 and thus now the last step says Eliminate any value since it's a square root function. Now what is so special about the square root function is that it never ever gives you the output also as a negative value. Yes, maybe you have never noticed that square root of 25. Now there is a very critical concept here. We say x square is equal to 25 let's say. This gives us the answer x is equal to plus minus 5. Whereas if I say my x is square root of 25, this gives me the answer x is equal to 5. Now you might feel it is the same thing. No, please see here my initial function is a square function. So even if you say that I'm taking square root on both sides, initial function is a square function. It can give me the values plus or minus 5. However, here for x equal to if it already has a square root, the final answer would be only the positive value. If you understand this, good enough. Otherwise, please mention in the comment section below if you need a separate video for square function and a square root function. I'll be happy to do that. I make math videos on full concepts which are useful for your competitive exams, your school exams, CBSC, ISC and many more. And also, I create videos on super shortcuts and tricks which are again very very useful for your competitive exams. So now y is a square root function that means I cannot take negative values. So that means instead of saying r minus singleton 0 as per this I have to look at the function and realize y is a square root function so it will never give you the output to be a negative value. Thus what we say over here is my range is going to be 0 to infinity. Please look once again my y as per this expression can have any value except for 0. However, we do realize y is a square root function. So you can never get an answer saying square root of x minus 5 is say minus 1. This is not possible because being a square root function, it can never give you a negative value. If it cannot give us a negative value, so that means all this is out of league. And the only interval that works well is 0 to infinity. Have a look. Make sure you understand it's very important. Now those of you who have seen my video on domain of a function, you know we discussed four kind of these square root functions where I said your 9, in place of 9 I can have any constant, most probably a perfect square. So I'm not getting into how we found the domain, for that you'll have to check the video. So here, if I equate this with y, now once again squaring both sides we get 9 minus x square is equal to y square. 
This means my x square is equal to 9 minus y square. Now, this is your new function. There is no need to take the square root. Rather, you do understand x, since we are dealing with only real functions, x square is going to be always. So, since we know x square will always be greater than or equal to 0, therefore, my 9 minus y square is also greater than or equal to 0. You remember how we took the question forward from this point? Yes, the method of intervals or the number line method. So, let's do that one more time. This means 3 minus y into 3 plus y is greater than or equal to 0. Again, we make this interval and very quickly check the intervals. So here we have 3 minus, if I take something from this interval, 3 minus minus 4, that is positive, 3 minus 4, that's negative. Taking y to be 0, 3 and 3, that's positive. Taking anything from here, let's say 4, negative and positive, negative. Now you might be thinking, that how am I doing it so fast? Well, we have already discussed this method in detail while discussing the domain of a function. So as per this, since 3 minus y into 3 plus y should be positive, so I should get my answer for y to be that my y should lie between and I'll say minus 3 to 3. However, Kahani may twist the last step. The last step said that you might have to eliminate some values looking at the definition or the basic function. As we realize y is a square root function, it can never take negative values. So, you would say range of the given function is, so this is like minus 3 to 3, but what I'll do is, it turns positive from 0. So, I would eliminate this portion and take only 0 to 3. So, 0 to 3 is my answer. Bingo! Wasn't that easy? Similarly, talking about this one. So, if I equate it with y and square both sides, this is what we get. From here, you say x square is equal to y square plus 9. Now this means my y square plus 9 should always be greater than or equal to 0. So from here it says y square plus 9 should be greater than or equal to 0. Don't you think that will always be true? Because y, y could be any real number. The moment I put it, I will take it square. So it will automatically turn positive. So ideally y can belong to r. But, 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 you know the initial function is a square root function, so I can never take any negative value. Thus, the range over here becomes 0 to infinity because I'm eliminating all the negative ones. The reason which you can give is since y is equal to square root of x square minus 9 or you can say since y is a square root function. That's it. Same way with this one, again, let's start with our process equal to y, then squaring both sides, then cross multiplying. So now from here, I'll get x square y square is equal to 9y square minus 1. And from here, my x square becomes 9y square minus 1 upon y square. So we have expressed x in terms of y. You know my x square has to be positive. Also by looking at this function, you do realize that your y cannot certainly be 0. So this much we know. Now, since x square is greater than or equal to 0, so that means the overall function 9y square minus 1 upon y square would be greater than or equal to 0. Obviously, y square being the square of a real number, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. We already know it can't be equal to 0, so that means y square would anyway be positive. So again, we are only left to discuss this. So this means 3y minus 1 into 3y plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's plot the number line. So the numbers are this time minus 1 by 3 and 1 by 3. Minus infinity to minus 1 by 3, you take any number, let's say minus 1. So 3 into minus 1 would be negative minus negative. So that's negative and 3 into minus 1, again negative. 
So this gives me a positive answer between minus 1 by 3 to 1 by 3. Let's take a, let's say we take a 0. So this is 0. So this will be negative. This is 0. This is positive. Again, my answer is negative. 1 by 3 to infinity. Let's take y to be 1. So is it will be 3 into 1 minus 1. That's positive. 3 into 1 plus 1. That's positive. So ideally, we should take the intervals to be these two. However, y being a square root function can never get the value negative. So simply the range for this function becomes 1 by 3 to infinity. Yes, I can include 1 by 3 and 0 of course with this interval is anyway out of question. Have a look. I would request you people to try out question 6 on your own because they're all very similar and rather I would move to one more tricky question. Okay. Let's look at this question and without getting hassled, let's follow the procedure. So equal to y, this means 3 is equal to 2y minus x square y. This means it will be x square y is equal to 2y minus 3. So x square is equal to 2y minus 3 by y. Certainly y can't be 0. Since x square is always greater than or equal to 0, so this gives us 2y minus 3 upon y would also be greater than or equal to 0. Now, again, as I discussed, a simple trick, what you do is you multiply and divide with y. Why should we do that? So that at least we are carefree about the denominator because that will always stay positive. This step was discussed in detail when we discuss domain of a function. So you know where to go. Click the i button, get the video. So here what I do is 2y minus 3 into y upon y square is greater than or equal to 0. Now of course y square has to be positive. So the only focus now lies on 2y minus 3 into y greater than or equal to 0. Follow your friend the number line method. So the points are 0 and 3 by 2. Once again, let's check the sub intervals for its signs. Minus infinity to 0, let's say minus 1. 2 into minus 1 minus 3 negative into minus 1 negative that makes it positive 0 to 3 by 2 now this time 0 to 3 by 2 I can take 1 so 2 minus 3 negative into 1 positive so final answer negative 3 by 2 to infinity let's take 2 2 into 2 into 2 minus 3 would be positive into 2 positive so positive so ideally these should be the answer. Let's check the last step in case we need to eliminate. We look at the original function, not a problem. There is no square root involved. So the range for the given function becomes both the intervals minus infinity to no, you cannot include zero. We just discussed that, that my y cannot be equal to zero, even over here when we wrote. So minus infinity to zero union, but then there is no restriction on three by two. So that can certainly be taken. So include these two intervals. That's your answer. Now I can go on and on and on solving questions, but then the video would get too long. So here is a little do it yourself question for you. I know you might feel it's very simple or maybe very complicated. Whatever it is, just try it out and you know you have to give the answers in the comment section below. The top three correct answers get named in my upcoming videos. So check this out. If this video helped you in simplifying your problems in range of a function, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Guys, it is very, very motivating if you actually like the video and hit the like button. Also, make sure to share it with all the people around you who have been grappling with this range of a function. Also, as you may have noticed, I did not do any of the trigonometric functions. If you want me to take up the domain and the range of the trigonometric functions, do mention that in the comment section below. And if you haven't done that so far, make sure to subscribe to my channel for many more math videos. I would see you with the next one. Until then, bye-bye.